Welcome to the Mini Grand Getting Started Guide. In this video, we'll guide you through the steps to turn your box of components into an awesome electronic instrument. Everything covered in this video can also be found in the Getting Started Manual, downloadable from amomi.com. Links in the description. Soldering. Step 1. We'll start with the resistors. Bend all of the resistors into U-shapes and place them in the correct spot. Use a piece of cardboard to hold the resistors in place while you turn it over. Heat up both the solder pad and the resistor leg and introduce the solder. Be sure that the solder fuses with both the leg and the solder pad, creating a triangular shape. When they are all finished, use an angle snipper to cut off the excess and use safety goggles to protect your eyes. Step 2. Solder the photoresistor in place and chop off the excess. Step 3. Place the audio amp IC with the notch corresponding to the notch on the label. Unlike with the previous two steps, if the IC is soldered with the wrong orientation, it won't work. Turn over the mini grand PCB and solder the IC in place. Step 4. Solder the two ceramic capacitors in place and snip off the excess. They look similar, but be sure not to mix them up. Step 5. Solder the audio jack in place. Be sure that all four legs go through and the jack sits flush with the PCB. Step 6.1 Put all of the push buttons in place with the legs at the side. Push the legs through so the bottom of the buttons are flush with the PCB. Can you see which one of ours isn't? You may need to slightly bend the legs if they don't fit through easily. Step 6.2 Place the red LEDs in their spots, making sure that the cathode, the small leg, corresponds to the flat edge on the LED label. As with the buttons, it is important that the LEDs sit flush with the PCB, so take care and use a piece of cardboard when turning it over. On top of this, you can use some blue tack to hold the PCB flat while you solder the LEDs in place. Finish and cut off the excess. Step 7. Snap the header strip into 5 pieces. You need 2 eighths, 2 sixes and keep the remainder for later use. Push the long side of the header pins into your Uno as shown. Then place the mini grand so that the small end of the header pins protrude through the solder pads labelled J2 to J4. Solder each header pin in place, then remove the shield from the Uno. Step 8.1 Put the passive buzzer in place, ensuring that the positive side on the buzzer corresponds to that on the label. Turn over the PCB and solder it in place. Step 8.2 Again, using the cardboard to assist you, put the two 3-pin female headers in place. Turn over the PCB and solder. Try to make sure that the header pins are as straight as possible. Step 9. In a similar fashion to previous components, solder the switch in position. Step 10. Solder the screw terminal to the bottom of the PCB. As this component is on the bottom of the PCB, you will be soldering on the top. Step 11.1 Solder the electrolytic capacitors in place, ensuring that the cathode short leg, 
corresponds to the flat band on the side of the circular label. Cardboard can come in handy here to keep everything flat while soldering. When finished, cut off the excess. Step 11.2 Put the four potentiometers in their spots, turn over the PCB and solder them in place. We used a small stack of cardboard to make sure everything was level before soldering. Step 12 with soldering finished, all that's left in this section is to attach the Amomi Glow Strip across the Mini Grand PCB using the female header pins. Make sure that the triangular arrows on the PCB are pointing to the right. Getting connected. To connect the Mini Grand Shield to the Amomi Uno, you simply push the male header pins on the underside of the shield into the Uno's female header pins. Code it to light. Now we need to check that everything is working as it should. Connect the UNO to your computer using the provided USB-C to A cable, or use your own USB-C cable if you prefer. With the Arduino IDE open, click on the boards and ports drop-down menu, and notice which COM ports show up. Now, with the drop-down menu still open, pull out the USB cable and note which one disappears. The COM port that disappears is the one used by your UNO. Plug it back in and select the correct port. When the Select Other Boards and Ports windows appears, in the Boards section, search for UNO and select Arduino UNO. Click OK and you're done. Now, we will try to upload an example sketch. Select File, Examples, Basic, Blink. And when the sketch loads up, click the Upload button. If you see the Done Uploading node at the bottom of your screen and the LED is blinking on your UNO, all is good and you can move on. Code it to life. Now, we will test the Mini Grand Shield. To do this, you'll need to download the test code for the Mini Grand. In the same download, you'll also get lesson code and some fun examples. Go to the Downloads section at amomi.com. If you haven't already created a free account, do that first. Log in and click on Downloads. When you get to the Downloads page, find the Mini Grand section and click on the code link. The zip folder will start downloading automatically. Extract the zip folder, open it and find the MG test code. Open that on the Arduino IDE and you're ready to begin the test. Go through the same steps as before to make sure that the UNO board and port is selected. Open the serial monitor by clicking the magnifying glass icon in the top right of the IDE, then hit Upload. Now, at the bottom of the IDE, click the Serial Monitor tab, and words should appear. These words guide you through the steps of the test and should be enough on their own, but let's do it together anyway. First, as instructed, hit Enter on your keyboard to continue. You should hear a beep, and the leftmost LED should light up. If it does, press the button under it, which should turn the LED off and turn the next one on. Repeat these steps for each LED button combination. If you don't hear anything, make sure that the switch is switched to the right hand side buzzer. If anything doesn't work, check the soldering, orientation of the LED and connection to the UNO. Next, turning pot A0 counterclockwise should turn off all the LEDs one by one. When you turn all the LEDs off, there should be a beep. Then you can turn the pot clockwise to turn all the LEDs back on. Repeat these steps for pot A2 and pot A3. Now, we will test the photoresistor. Without blocking the light from the sensor, press key seven, it should be glowing. Now, cover the sensor, blocking as much light as you can, and press key 8, then remove your hand. When the LEDs turn on, try moving your hand to and from the sensor. The amount of light you block should control how many LEDs stay lit. When you completely cover the sensor, you will hear a beep, and the photoresistor test is complete. Finally, 
When you are ready for the final step, press enter on your keyboard and watch the stunning Amomi Claw do its thing. Assemble the piano. Next up, we will put together the piano case. Once parts are connected, to avoid damage, we advise you to not take them apart again, so follow the steps carefully. Start by screwing the mini grand shield into the main body of the piano. You don't need to screw it too tight, just make sure that it can't move around easily. Then, hang the keys on the key holder from the back and place it on the table. Place the piano top and push it down briskly, creating the key top combo. Connect the key top combo to the main body one side at a time. You will need to pull the body wall out carefully to attach the last stud. At this point you should notice that the back is loose. To correct this, push it in and release it onto the latch. Finally, being careful not to break the small hinge arms, clip the lid to the piano and see if it closes. Add the finishing touches by propping the lid up using the stand and your masterpiece is all complete and ready to be enjoyed. Try uploading and playing around with some of the example code and be sure to try writing some of your own. Enjoy!